MCTs are mentioned a lot when it comes to coconut oil, medium chain tr uh, triglycerides. Describe what those are and, and why those are such a, a talking point when it comes to coconut oil. Yeah, this is somewhat of a pet peeve of, of mine with how researchers and media again handle fats because there's different classifications and they sort of have their cake and eat it too when they, when they want. They kind of pick and choose uh, how they want to address it. And, uh, and the reasoning for that is if you look at unsaturated fats, we know that there's very distinct subclasses of unsaturated fats. There's monounsaturated fats. There's polyunsaturated fats. And within the polyunsaturated fats, you have omega-3s, omega-6s, omega-9s. And all of them have their distinct properties, their distinct uses. Some are anti-inflammatory. Some are recognized as more pro-inflammatory. But when we talk about saturated fats, we just talk about saturated fats. We don't designate the the specific chain lengths of that fat. And so the short, medium, and long uh, saturated fatty acids is based on how long that carbon chain is on that molecule. And so there's short chain, there's medium chain, there's long chain. Long chain are what we typically think of when we think of saturated fats. That's in your, your animal products, your milk, your cheese, that sort of thing. Uh, short chain fatty acids are found naturally in the gut. They're like a, they, you know, they can be a fuel for the intestines, such as uh, something called butyrate, uh, which is produced by our colon cells. Uh, well, it's produced by our bacteria, which then feed our, our colon cells. And so it's a really ready, readily source of fuel. MCTs are in the middle. They're chain lengths of 6 to 12. Uh, some will include uh, the 14 carbon chain. And these have unique properties uh, from the long chain saturated fats. And it goes into how they're absorbed and utilized in the body, which gives coconut oil and palm oil their unique properties. And the way they're, the way they're metabolized is, one, they do not need pancreatic lipase. They don't need the same enzymes as other fats. Uh, so when they get to the small intestine, they actually get it absorbed right away. They don't need cholesterol. They don't need the chylomicrons and things to be transported through the body. They actually go right to the liver where some of them are turned into energy uh, in the form of ketones, which is a, another topic in of itself that's yeah. very popular. Uh, ketones are an alternative source of energy uh, from sugar, from glucose, and it's the only other fuel that the brain can work on. And so that's where some of the excitement with coconut oil and Alzheimer's, for instance, comes into play because there is some thought and some good research to suggest that Alzheimer's could be a uh, type three diabetes where the brain's sort of blocking its transport of glucose. And so that's where you can get some cognitive difficulties and uh, you know, placking and, and those sorts of things that occur. But when you look at MCT, um, the, the ketones, it's a non-glucose source of energy. So now the brain has an alternative fuel source that it can, you know, it's like the brain is insulin resistant and now it has this other fuel it can work on. And, they're seeing some pretty amazing turnarounds with, with some individuals. And it's based on the unique metabolism. Uh, so even naturally, the medium chain triglycerides, they do not need cholesterol to be transported in the body. Uh, if you eat a lot of them, yeah, you'll start to see some higher levels of, of cholesterol just because of the transport. But uh, most research when it looks at MCTs actually have a neutral uh, to positive effect on, on LDLs or, or, and on cholesterol levels as a whole. Uh, they increase HDLs um, to a greater degree than they increase LDL. Uh, they also lower that lipoprotein A uh, and some of those other markers. Uh, well, you talked about one of the benefits that we're finding with coconut oil and potentially with uh, brain health and mm -hmm. Alzheimer's is certainly being studied. Um, uh, you know, weight management is another one that's being studied. Are we just kind of scratching the surface as to what the potential benefits of coconut oil might be, do you think? I think we're, we're realizing, we're re-realizing yeah. some of the benefits. I mean, coconut oil uh, has been used for centuries, uh, millennia in you know, uh, ancient you know, India and uh, the areas where it's grown. It's called, you know, the tree is called the tree of life because of all these uses. And um, we're, so we're, we're sort of revisiting that and the research is just now appreciating that. And we're looking at studies back in the 60s and 70s that are showing these relationships and reanalyzing them and so forth. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, we really are scratching the surface. You, you know, the Coconut Research Center was, was 
formed in 2000, so it's only been around for 10, 15 years. And it takes a lot. These are generational changes when you look at who's practicing, how long does it take them to go through medical school, how long does it take to go into the textbooks, how long. Uh, and, and then, you know, when doctors are out practicing, you know, they're using the same textbooks and so forth that they had when they were in, in school. And so really, uh, we're always going to be 20, 30 years behind. And that doesn't even mention the insurance models that come around that research as well, which could be another five years. Uh, so really, we, any time, and it's just a natural course of, of our system, is we're, we're 30, 40 years behind of what we know, what the yeah. leading edge uh, research is. So yeah, surely we're, we're definitely scratching the surface. We had another 20 years to, yeah. to um, really get this information out there.